Hey, this is Josh Klenoff from Helm, and we're gonna have a lot of fun today with this scaling up training. Why? Because if you're stuck running the day-to-day -day operations in your business, too busy to focus on what your business really needs to grow, this system is gonna transform your role as CEO. It's gonna free you up so you can start focusing on what really matters. Today, you're gonna to discover how to strengthen your organization, increase accountability team-wide, and ultimately scale up so you can break through the series of ceilings on the road ahead without having to figure this stuff all out for yourself. You're gonna see the system that over 7,000 companies are using to get to the next level of growth in their business. This system is called the Entrepreneurial Operating System. Now, with a thousand or so business improvement programs out there, maybe you're a little skeptical about why this one is worthwhile. Plus, you've probably implemented all sorts of tools to help you grow your business already. You probably have some form of KPIs, and you've probably documented certain processes that your people follow. And if you're like most CEOs, you've attempted some roadmap for creating your mission and making it matter to your people. Well, this presentation could be a huge turning point for your company and you as a CEO or entrepreneur because you're going to discover not a tool but a comprehensive system that brings together the tools you need to get everyone in your company rowing in the same direction toward a crystal clear vision and with ultra high accountability and enables you to do more of what your company needs from you as a visionary CEO and less of the micromanaging and running of the day-to-day -day operations. You'll be able to build a functional, cohesive, healthy team which means, on the one hand, trust across the company will grow, which also means you'll be able to let go and have more freedom. And all of this means you'll start to gain traction immediately. It's hard for me to see entrepreneurs mess up or waste precious time and cheat their family and themselves out of time they could have had. So as you're listening here, I could ask you to suspend skepticism, just listen to what I'm gonna share with you, but actually I'm gonna ask you to do the exact opposite. I want you to bring your skepticism since it's actually the critical thinking and questions and challenges of over 7,000 CEOs who've implemented the system that are the reason the systems become so strong and so strongly accepted. Please listen carefully to what you're about to hear because if you're like any CEO who's used the system, it can really be life-changing for you and everyone in your company. So who's this for? This is for any CEO, founder, owner, president, or entrepreneur with revenues of upwards of a million and a half dollars. The average company's got revenues of typically 10 to 25 million, but there are also plenty of hundred million dollar companies and billion plus revenue companies that attribute their success massively to the system. The system's for you if you're beyond the startup stage. So you know what your product is, who your market is, and you know how to repeatably and profitably connect your product with your market. Typically, companies that implement the system have 10 to 500 employees. Some have fewer, some have many, many more. This is for you if you're open-minded and interested in bringing out the potential of your business. Believe it or not, not everyone is. This is for you as well if your answer to any of these questions is no. Do you have the right person in the right seat for everyone in your company. In other words, for all the jobs to get done, do you have the right person doing it? Have you systematized your business so that your key processes are streamlined and followed by everyone? End to end, does everyone have the level of accountability and execution you'll need to achieve the great vision you've got for your organization? And how about the vision itself? Is that clear to everyone in the organization? Are the key drivers of your business success clearly defined both at a high level and at the individual level so that everyone in the company has something measurable to achieve in order to drive the business's success? And the last question, when issues come up, are they getting solved so that they actually go away once and for all or do they keep coming back? If your answer to any of these questions was no, please listen very carefully to what I'll be sharing with you here. I promise you this has changed the game for CEOs and can be absolutely game-changing for you. My goal is that if you stay until the end here, you'll have an understanding of the system that Jeff Hoffman, my partner, friend, and billionaire co-founder of Priceline, calls the number one system 
for scaling up. And I'm confident you'll agree that you've never seen anything quite like this. So imagine if you could have the system of the world's top entrepreneurs without having to waste your time experimenting with dozens or hundreds of tools. Think about how happy you'd be when you finally have a system you can rely on. That's why it's critical you turn off anything that might distract you from absorbing anything in this training. That includes email, list of messages, extra browser windows that are open, or anything else that could prevent you from absorbing every single moment of this training. If you can give me that commitment, I can commit to showing you a system that puts you in the driver's seat of changing your financial future and creating an extraordinary culture. I imagine that's got to be worth closing anything that could distract you from this training for about 30 minutes. Sound reasonable? So go ahead, take a second, close all of your browser windows, turn off your cell phone, shut down any instant messaging apps, pay attention please to every single moment of this presentation. Go ahead and do that now. Okay, we all set? Great. Let's get started. So first, who am I? I'm Josh Kledoff, and over the past 20 years, I've built four businesses. The first two, not very successful. The third and fourth, quite successful. With my third company, I partnered with one of the most famous executive coaches, Marshall Goldsmith, author of What Got You Here Won't Get You There. We built a multi-million dollar international coaching practice, coaching CEOs and leaders mostly of larger companies, Fortune 500s. After selling that company, I returned even closer to my entrepreneurial roots and partnered with Jeff Hoffman, the billionaire and one of the founders of Priceline. Now, through his career, Jeff built not only some multi-million dollar businesses, but also two totally separate multi-billion dollar businesses. And together, we've implemented a comprehensive scaling up system for small and mid-sized companies. Now, I've been incredibly fortunate to have access to the best scaling up system and tools on the planet. But when I started my career at 20 years old, no such system even existed. With my first two companies, despite significant financing with one of them, I was bumping up against the ceiling. The business stagnated. I didn't know how to get it to the next level. I didn't have guidance from people who really knew how to scale up a company. I'd gone to Wharton, a top business school. I read the 100 business books we're all supposed to read as CEOs, but they didn't catapult my company to that next level. It was a never-ending struggle to break through to that next level of growth, and I couldn't figure out how to do it. And then I discovered the solution that helped me stop spinning my wheels. It allowed me to make more progress in three months than I'd made in the prior three years. It came to me from a friend of mine, a guy named Mike Ugly, who told me about how his nutritional supplement business shifted from a small company that was just kind of stuck to a company of 250 employees and thriving. And he credited it to a system he called the Entrepreneurial Operating System. Well, it wasn't long before three of the CEOs I knew put the system to work in their business. And sure enough, I get a call from Mike and he says, Josh, Gino, the author of this book, Traction, who'd been implementing the system for the CEOs, needs help. Would I learn the system from Gino and implement it for other CEOs? Because apparently no one can put the system in place or even scratch the surface of implementing it from just reading the book. So I surveyed CEOs who had implemented the system in their companies to make sure it was worth getting trained in the system. And sure enough, after surveying a bunch of CEOs, it was out of a scale of 10 that I asked them to rate it, one to 10, it was about a 9.85. It was 10 for just about everyone, maybe nine for one of them. So I decided it was a no brainer. Learn the system from Gino. And that was a turning point, a point that changed my life, but the lives also of every CEO we've introduced the system to. Here are just a few of them. Now, if you look on Amazon, you'll see Gino's book on traction. And even though it covers just the surface level of the system, it's been one of the top few books in Amazon's entrepreneur category for years. It's only getting more popular each year. Over 7,000 CEOs have professionally implemented the system. And across the board, they characterize it as changing the game for them and for their entire company. 
It builds on the successes and failures of tens of thousands of companies and on the insights of business titans and pioneers who shaped the system, from Jim Collins, author of Good to Great, to Patrick Lencioni, author of The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. It builds on tools that some of the most successful companies on the planet attribute their success to, including a tool you've probably never heard of, but which Apple attributes a tremendous amount of their success to. Now, with this system, you don't have to work harder, but you and your team will work smarter. With the system, you don't have to run this business by the seat of your pants. Instead, you'll have metrics across the company with clear accountabilities for literally every person in the company to drive some part of those metrics. So at a glance, you'll know how the company's doing in any part of the company. With this system, everyone will have a single system and approach for meetings to avoid time wasting, to come together with the right people at the right time, to surface openly and honestly their biggest challenges, and to get them solved at the root level so they go away forever and don't return over and over. Alan Mulally, former CEO of Ford and one of our clients in my third business with Marshall Goldsmith, which was an executive coaching company, Alan says this is singularly the best system for running a company. Now, in my career, I've done a bunch of things right. I've also done a lot of things wrong, and I've been up close with hundreds of CEOs. I've witnessed lots of them at the edge, the edge of sanity, of divorce, of solvency, of anxiety and sleeplessness. I've seen it's far easier to do what over 99% of CEOs do to cobble together your way of doing things and to never discover the accumulated wisdom of the pioneers who've created this CEO blueprint for success. If you use the same conventional cobble it together approach that just about every other CEO uses, you might as well plan on perpetual sleeplessness or long bouts of bumping up against the ceiling and stagnating on leaving tremendous amounts of value on the table. But there are now over 7,000 CEOs who over the last 15 years have professionally implemented this system. And if you choose to, you can apply their playbook. The system they've implemented in order to break through the series of ceilings you'll face along the way to scaling up. Now when I talk about this playbook, the system, in case you're wondering what I'm referring to, so there are six key teachings and they all stem from a simple observation. As a CEO, you and each of the leaders on your team are wrestling with 100, 150 issues simultaneously. But all those issues are actually just symptoms. They're symptoms of six root causes. And if you strengthen your company in these six root areas, your organizational health will grow tremendously. Your accountability and discipline around your execution will soar. Your ability to scale up will transform. So what are these six areas? The six key sets of tools you'll learn about. Well, the first one is vision. And by that, I mean, where are you going and how are you going to get there? And we specifically map out the answer to eight questions and get crystal clear on them. Now, to keep this presentation practical, I'll share just one of those eight for now. So which one should we look at? How about what's behind door number seven? Question number seven is what are your 90-day rocks? Now, with rocks, the easiest way to pick up what I'm putting down to understand this is with the exercise Stephen Covey did when he visited a class of mine about 20 years ago. He had a cylinder and a bunch of cups. Now, one of the cups had rocks, one had stones, one had sand, one had water. And he put the stuff from the cups into the cylinder one by one. So first, he put in the stones, then the sand, then the water, and finally the rocks. But only a few of the rocks actually fit. A bunch couldn't. Then he did the exercise again. But this time he put the rocks in first, then the stones, then the sand, and the water came last. And sure enough, all the rocks and everything else fit. Moral was, unless you get the big rocks in first, you'll never get them done. Now, what the heck's this got to do with your company? Well, the stones represent your day-to-day -day role. The sand represents all the interruptions. And the water is everything else. Now, if you let that stuff take up your time, it'll take up all your time from now until your last day, if you know what I mean. But the rocks are those things outside your day-to-day -day role. They're the 90-day goals that will truly catapult your company to the next level. And what we've seen with over 7,000 companies 
is that unless you commit to your three quarterly rocks, there is no way they actually happen. But once you clear the time to figure out what those rocks should be, what those rocks are, and you actually commit to them, suddenly the architecture of your next 90 days changes. In fact, your day-to-day, moment-to-moment existence changes. And as we cascade the system to the rest of the company, when everybody in the organization has their rocks, it's devastatingly effective for focusing and bringing accountability to everyone in the organization. Now, zooming out, I mentioned that to stop attacking symptoms and to start attacking the root causes, we cover six key areas. The first, the one we just discussed, is vision. And while we only peeked at one of the eight questions of vision, it gives you an idea of the clarity we created once we get through all eight vision questions thoroughly. The second key area after vision is people. And specifically, the question we ask is, how do we get the right people in the right seats? So to take a look at the first part of this, what does it mean when we say right people? It means people share your core values. Now, part of the challenge with values is that it's such an overplayed term, about 99% of companies that think they've got this, well, they've got it, they've just got it dead wrong. When I ran an executive coaching firm quite a while back, my partner and I were called down to coach the leadership team of a company you may have heard of, and... Well, we met him down in Austin, Texas at an off-site event, and right after that company showed about 200 of their top executives what could have been a $250,000 video beautifully choreographed showing their core values, community, transparency, integrity. There were little kids running around the streets of this neighborhood on a sunny day under sprinklers, rainbow, all that beautiful stuff. Might as well put sprinkles on top of the rainbow. What happens? The next day, that company, which by the way, is called Enron, had his first charges filed against it, and the dominoes started to fall from there. Now, you're not running Enron, but just about every company I've seen does the same thing. They talk about their values, but they're really talking about the values they preach, not the values they practice. So what happens? Well, their values and the rest of their vision are nothing other than happy talk, what we call blah, blah, blah. Now, they don't use their values to hire or fire, or to reward people, or to reinforce their culture in any meaningful way. The thing is, that's precisely the purpose of values. If you read Good to Great, you'll see the companies that reinforce and make key decisions around their true values dramatically outperform their industry peers. So with our system, one of the things we do is a series of discovery exercises to uncover your actual values. And when we do, we typically see at least one person who pretty clearly is at odds with those core values. And on the one hand, it was obvious. On the other, it was just a feeling without an objective basis for everyone to see the mismatch and pave a clear path to transitioning that person out. So that's a little bit of a taste of how to figure out the right people, but we still have got to figure out right seats. Now, this is also a discovery process, but a bit more challenging. And whether it's a restaurant owner with street smarts full of hustle or a team of Harvard MBAs, it doesn't matter. This part of the journey is challenging. But when our team works with you to implement the system, everyone gets through it and it's an epiphany and a true game-changing experience and tool every time. So a lot of people are familiar with an org chart where you see everyone's names and their functions. Now, what we do with what we call an accountability chart is we flip the concept of an org chart completely on its head. We fill the people in last, and each person appears in multiple places. The question we start with is what are the key functions or jobs to get done in the organization? Then we identify the key roles for each. And what fundamentally changes when we do this is that only one person can ultimately be accountable for each function. So we're forced to do a bunch of things. First, we have to identify every important function or job to be done in the entire organization. Then we need to acknowledge that only one person is ultimately accountable for that function and everyone knows who it is. So when there's a job to get done, it's a heck of a lot likelier to get done. And if it doesn't, there's crystal clear accountability. This is why we call it the accountability chart. Now that person can get help from as many people will give help But again, ultimately, there's one person and one person only who's accountable. And we also put every function in a logical, intuitive place in the chart 
so that in a moment, in a snap, in a second, you can find anything that has to get done in the organization and who's responsible for it. You can also see where any process begins and ends. So there's none of that, oh, we didn't really know who's supposed to be doing that. Or I thought he, she was supposed to do that. I thought he was supposed to do that, right? None of that nonsense. So zooming out again, once we identify every function, we call those functions seeds. And there's one tool in the system we use to quickly and easily see if someone's in the right seat. In other words, if they're in a job that they get, they want, and they have the time or capacity to do successfully. Because if they're missing any of those three things, getting it, wanting it, or having the capacity, it's the wrong seat. Ultimately, what helps companies break through the ceiling for every job to get done in the company, for every person in the company, is making sure they've got the right person in the right seat. So people is the second area of our system. And before I move on to the next one, I just want to say that this system is different from something you learn, something you use in your business and say to your colleagues, ah, you know, that system was helpful or that was interesting. I used to run a training company and we ran programs like that, fun, interesting, helpful, some solid skill building. But if I'm honest, it wasn't life-changing. It wasn't a paradigm shift. It was what it was. But what this system is, this is a series of tools woven together, reinforcing each other and creating a paradigm for doing business. So when people ask you what you do or how you do what you do or how you find the right people or any of these foundational questions, everyone in your company has the same answer. And it's a brilliant answer that comes from this system because it's evolved from the learnings of hundreds of thousands of companies. Lots of them flatlined or went out of business. Some of them succeeded. But this lets you learn from the accumulated wisdom of all of them. All right, so we've covered the first and second areas. You know where you're going from your vision and who's going to get you there with that people piece we just covered. The third area is data. And this is what helps you get beyond the stories and egos and all the talk that keeps you running around in circles. Data is about getting a no-nonsense, no BS, no time-wasting read on how your business is doing. See, we're all scientists in some sense, making guesses, seeing how they work out. But the problem is we ignore 97% of the data. We're often focused on the wrong things. In the first business book I ever read, Peter Drucker said that what gets measured gets managed. So what does that mean? Well, one of the companies we implemented this system for, a company called Quality of Life Labs, spun out a division from its larger company. The smaller division implemented our system and started scoring itself on different metrics than the parent company used for scoring. Now, one of these key metrics was number of calls to prospective partners, which was a bit tricky at first because they didn't have the ability to even capture that number until they got clear they wanted that number. Every week, they updated their actual numbers and compared them to the goal. Anytime anyone missed a target, the group looked at it as a problem to solve. And every week, the leadership team looked at these metrics and solved whatever problems cropped up around these key metrics. Well, in two years, their growth was staggering. The larger company, the parent company, had grown nicely, but the subsidiary had exploded. Their growth was over a 1,000% the growth of the parent company, over 10 times the growth of the parent company. Now, one of the things that's key is that everyone in the organization has a number, a metric, and they're ultimately accountable for that metric. But until they have that accountability, it's unclear what's needed from them. And until that metric's discussed weekly, they're sure as heck not sticking their neck out every week asking for help if that number is falling short of the mark. Now, the thing that makes it incredibly difficult to ignore these issues lurking just under the surface, these hidden threats to our company, is that we're not just looking at the data in isolation, just this week's data. We're looking at 13 weeks of data at a time. See, we're catching the news kind of like a meteorologist before it becomes a news story, before the storm hits. We get the situation as it's emerging, before it gets gnarly. And actually, when we combine all the tools of the system, what we're really doing is smoking out all the issues. See, the thing is, and this is one of my favorite parts of the system, the issues have got nowhere to hide. Not anymore, anyway. Not once you've got the system in place. And that's why the fourth area of our system is issues. So at this point, your company's priorities are clear. Everybody should have a clear role 
and the data's on the table. Nothing sugar-coated, and once everything's on the table, it's easy to spot the issues. So this is where issue solving comes in. Specifically, what we introduce with the system is a series of tools to make issues go away forever. That forever part is the key. See, what virtually everyone does is just discuss issues. But just discussing issues misses the point. Why? We're so busy discussing issues that we rarely even identify the underlying issue. And at best, we end up swatting at symptoms. We virtually never solve the underlying issue. People just keep bringing up the same points and going off on tangents, wasting everyone's time in meeting after meeting. So one of the big aha moments when people implement the system is they solve problems forever and a no BS culture takes hold. So everyone's clear on the vision where you're going, the right people are in the right seats, you're all looking at numbers with no sugar coating, telling you the real deal of how you're doing week to week. And to hit the numbers and make the problems that come up go away, you're gonna get really good at problem solving at the root. So here's an example, this is Ned. Ned's the CEO of a food company called BMT Wiser. Before working with us to implement a new system for his business, Ned had run the company for about 13 years. Now, Ned's a humble guy, but super smart. Harvard MBA, 30 years in the food industry, but he couldn't scale his business beyond low eight figures. And with years of trying different hires, different software programs, different tools in a bunch of areas, and lots of changes, he and his team attempted all over the map. They felt like they couldn't get the system, like they were spinning their wheels, basically watching their sales stand still. After we implemented the system, it was clear where they had the wrong people or people in the wrong seat. It was clear that an entirely new job had to get done, a job no one had ever performed, but which was sorely needed. It was clear how to get everyone communicating and around what targets. It was clear what had to happen for them to get to the next level. After implementing the system, Ned's team is now on a trajectory to 5x its revenues over the next three years. 500% sales growth as compared with the last three years of flat sales. The one thing I wanna make sure you understand, because this is really important, is that our system doesn't just help you scale up. It helps you scale up without selling your soul. See, this system helps you cultivate organizational health because a lot of organizations are good at their craft. Restaurants make good food, software companies make good software, a manufacturing company might make something really well, but they're not healthy. There's loads of politics, the leadership team isn't cohesive, people aren't open and honest with each other. At this point, we've covered most of the six areas where we address problems at that root level. One of them I haven't mentioned yet, and that's the fifth area, is process. So instead of Jan's way, or Rick's way, or Peter's way, instead you have your company's way. See, the thing is, until you systematize your business, there are all sorts of ways things get done. And often, the person doing them is the only one who can do them. But once you create process, suddenly you can delegate that stuff and elevate yourself to a new, higher use for yourself. So as you're busying yourself and bumping up against that ceiling, this key area of our system process forces you to step back, build process, and pave the way to creating value an order of magnitude beyond where you are now. Now, this is something we cascade throughout your company. For all the people, all your key processes from HR to lead gen to sales, from building to delivering your offering to managing the inflows and outflows of money to creating happy customers, and when you can simplify things like that, you can move faster, better, and more harmoniously. Ultimately, more profitably. But if you're too stuck in executing to take that step back in craft process, you're not going to get to take the 10 steps forward that come once you've created that process. So that brings us to the sixth and final area we focus on with our system, and that's traction. Here we bring tools that boost the accountability and discipline around your execution. And one of these tools is what we call the weekly level 10 meeting. Now, this weekly level 10 meeting starts out just among your leadership team, but eventually you cascade it to the entire organization. So eventually everyone is involved in some kind of weekly level 10 meeting. The most important part of the meeting is that it doesn't suck. It's not just reporting, 
it's not just discussing things, it's solving problems at that root level. And after everyone bonds around some good news to kick off the meeting, we get the biggest issues on the table. We go through the entire scorecard to highlight any targets that didn't get hit. Then we go through all of our rocks, highlight any rocks that are off track that seem like we might not be crushing them this quarter. Then we call out any customer or employee issues, really any issues at all that we want to surface. Problems, roadblocks, barriers, opportunities. Now, at that point, all that highlighted stuff, they're issues to solve. And we solve them at the root level with someone taking ownership of that solution, committing to a defined outcome in the next week. That is, even if they don't solve the entire issue, they're at least taking some step by next week's level 10 meeting that we can hold them accountable to. So, if we can pause and take a look at the six sets of tools across these six roots of your company, they start to paint a picture of how you can get more of what you want from your business. Imagine for a moment what it would be like to align your entire team around a single vision and a clear plan for achieving that vision. Think about how much easier life would be when you have the right people in the right seats. What it would feel like when your team can surface and solve their biggest issues without needing you to be there for every big issue. You won't constantly feel anxious. The processes and systems you put in place are going to bring efficiency, harmony, fun, perhaps most of all, profit. And beyond that, you'll have an unfair advantage over other companies in your industry who have issues around accountability and a lack of clarity throughout their company. Now, I know I've spent just about 30 minutes showing you very high level how to get more of what you want out of your business, but a half hour isn't really enough time to get into enough depth with the system so you can take the tools and run with them. So you can take what I've shared with you and whatever you can cobble together that's out there about the system, try to pull these tools together yourself, or you can follow in the footsteps of over 7,000 CEOs who've properly implemented the system professionally, who've experienced the paradigm shift. And we can continue what we learned today where you can work with my team and me directly so we can actually help you and implement everything we just talked about. But if you're looking for the path of least resistance or you're not really interested in bringing out the potential of your team, this will not be for you.